How to remove a dent from a model steam boiler. This is an experiment in removing a very serious dent in a small copper boiler barrel. Once the job is completed I will raise the pressure to a very high level just to show what happens. There are very small dents and marks in most of these boilers but this one is especially bad. I've shown this in a previous episode. Heating the dented area of the boiler is called annealing and this will soften the copper in the part marked with the cross. It is important to concentrate the heat in the damaged area and not on any of the joints. The good news is that the 500 series of Stuart boilers are brazed and brazing melts at a higher temperature than silver solder. The temperature of the dented part needs to be raised to a dull red heat. If this was a silver soldered copper boiler you would have to do something to keep the heat away from the joints. Here are two 500 type boilers. The one nearest to the camera is the one I'm working on and a silver soldered new bush into the other one. They've both been in my acid bath for a day and you're looking at them after I've just rinsed off the acid. This is the boiler that I'm going to be working on in this episode and this is the good side. I've screwed blanking plugs into all of the bushes and this is my small boiler test rig. This next bit is important. You need to fully fill the boiler with water. There must be no air left inside whatsoever. I removed the main filler plug and fitted a funnel. I also raised the end of the boiler where I'd removed the blanking plug. All I need to do now is fill the boiler with water. This 500 boiler is quite small so it doesn't take very long. It's important when filling the boiler not to get water all over the place. By holding the boiler in this position and pumping some water in ensures that the boiler is completely filled with water and none of the air is left inside. In this part of the clip I'm moving the boiler into a position where the camera can see it. I pumped the boiler up to 150 pounds per square inch. The 500 series boilers are designed to run at 60 pounds per square inch, so really the hydraulic test only needs to be 120 pounds per square inch. Watch what happens when I take the pressure higher than 150. As if by magic, the severe dent in the side of the boiler starts to disappear as the pressure increases. As you can see, there are still some marks on the boiler, but the major dent is gone. At this point, the job is completed and the dent has been pushed out by the hydraulic pressure. No further action is necessary. Do not raise the pressure any higher. I am about to show what will happen if you continue to increase the water pressure, and it's not good. This is at 300 pounds per square inch, and at this pressure, the ends of the boiler are moving. Caution, what you are about to see is not recommended and is only shown for reference in this video. Doing this could completely destroy many designs of model steam boilers, especially the centreflu type. This one is old and I am risking a sacrifice for the video by increasing the hydraulic pressure to 400 pounds per square inch. Well, just under 400 pounds per square inch to be exact. The boiler didn't split or leak. Here I'm removing one of the blanking plugs to drop the pressure. At around 400 psi this is what happened. The ends of the boiler became very dished. And once again you need a warning. Do not do this at home. There's no real risk with the hydraulic test. But it's not a good idea to strain the boiler to this level. Here I'm carefully using a hide faced hammer to make both of the ends of the boiler flat once again. The water pressure at 400 pounds per square inch has even made the barrel expand. This says a lot for the quality of these early Stuart boilers. First I over hammered one end and now I'm over hammering the other end. So both ends are now pressed inwards. The solution? Refill the boiler with water. The fact that the front end of the boiler was blown wasn't really an issue. All that happened was the copper moved into a position which was best to resist the pressure. I've connected the test rig to the boiler and I'm releasing the air using a different method. The union nut is slack until all the airs come out. When I see a solid column of water, I then tighten the union nut. The main problem with the boiler ends being blown out is the one with the bushes in it because I can't put a water gauge in there. In exactly the same way as I removed the dent, by applying some water pressure, the end of the boiler moved outwards. 
I applied the water pressure very slowly so I could see when the bushes were in line. Here the pressure is starting to drop, but that's because I'm undoing one of the plugs. When the water pressure in the boiler got down to about 10 pounds per square inch, I removed the plug and got quite wet. This has been an interesting experiment and it's something I've wanted to do for a lot of years. The dent is gone, or at least it's a lot better, and both of the end caps are more or less flat once again. A few years ago, a friend of mine tried an experiment with some old locomotive boilers, and I remember him telling me that none of the boilers failed completely until the pressure was up around 600 psi. The good thing about using hydraulic pressure to test the boiler is if it fails, you just get wet. And that's it for this video. I hope you've learned something, at least I have. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.